Hello everyone. Well, as you can see, I'm still dealing with fishes. And I'm still dealing with this pen, the Jack Webb pen. Now the Jack Webb pen um, is just the facts, ma'am. That's all it wants. The thing that bothers me about it, other than the sort of nib that it has, which is uh, kind of unresponsive, it's just the facts, is it jiggles in the section, which happens to many pens as they get old and things expand and contract and stuff, and you, a pen repairman re fix is to put a little tiny piece of tape or a little tiny piece of paper in there and sort of wedge it in, and that extra thickness of the paper or the tape or a little bit of shellac or whatever will hold it tightly. And I might do that later today or next week or never, but we'll probably do it never. Now, <clears throat> one of the things about this pen that bothered me is not bothering me right now. And I may have just <clears throat> tweaked it in such a way so it's not bothering me. But what happens with some pens is the two tines, let's say, here's our nib. So let's just cut this out. One, two, let's just do this first. Cut the slit first. Three, four. Okay, so this is a this is what the nib is. Now it's curved like this, and the two tines are independent of one another. And every once in a while, if your pen seems scratchy, it could be because one of the tines is sticking up from the other one, just a little tiny bit. The ink still flows, but it's scratchy, and it may be perfectly fine when you do this on this side, but when you turn it upside down, the barb, you know, the edge of the iridium, digs into the paper and it scratches. So there's a little bit of tweaking you can do. If the nib looks like it's not bent, which sometimes it is bent like this, and you have to fix it, you have to bent it back. I'm not going to show you how to, to do that because I'm just not going to. You can see that on other videos of mine, but I'm not going to show you here. But what, <clears throat> so if it seems perfect and you shove the nib into the feed and feed into the section, sometimes the way it's shoved in will slightly torque this a bit and then to fix it, you can either take it out and put it back in and take it out and put it back in until you find that sweet spot that's perfect, but that could take all day. So an easy repair of that is to just slightly push the pen a little bit back and forth. So as you can see here, this nib is offset that way. And yes, I can spend all day long and putting it back and forth and in and out and maybe try a different feed. But right now, in this time and this place, with this pen and this artist, I don't care that it's offset. It doesn't bother me in the least. You know, if I look in the mirror and try to fix all the parts of me that are not symmetrical, I'd be there all day long. And it still wouldn't be. Something would hang a little bit more this way or be a little bit bigger on that side than on this side. And my, you know, my mouth doesn't quite, you know, so I don't have time for this. It works. My body work, well, more or less, works. So... What I've been doing here is using these 
pieces of paper. Benjamin Moore paint swatches. Summer Day. That's what this one's called. Summer Day. What's this one called? Summer Afternoon or Summer Night. Summer what? No, this is called Watercolor. And they spell it with a U just because Benjamin Moore snobby little and why is this upside down? I guess they're all this way. Polar sky. So what I'm doing on these very slick pieces of paper, I am drawing fish for a project I'm working on right now. And as you can see from this book, or you can't see from this book because it's off the page, there are a million different kinds of fish. Well, maybe not quite a million, but there are many kinds of fish. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm taking the images of these fish and I'm creating different kinds of art based on their design or lack thereof. This is a lionfish. And it has an eye and a mouth, and it has a fin and a tail, and I imagine it's teeth and a stomach and everything it's supposed to have. But it has all these spots on it, which is its claim to fame, I guess. Why it's called a lionfish. It should be a leopard fish, not a lionfish. And then what I do is take my watercolor enabled brush here and I go over the lines I just made with my Jack Webb pen, just the facts ma'am, and I um, sort of dissolve the water based ink, the non-waterproof ink, and I come up with this beautiful fish. Add to shopping cart one million dollars, and I can go back with my with my pen, and I can make more spots. Now, one of the things I'm also doing is I'm building fish out of cardboard in the gallery. There's a column in the middle of the gallery, which I've covered with fish made of uh, recycled cardboard from the recycle bins. And there are two halves of the col column. One half has a blue background made of blue cardboard all glued together in this sort of faceted pattern. And it has orange refracted koi fish on it. The other column has um, blue and white fish made with cardboard that's blue and white. And um, that they're trying, what I'm trying to do is sort of build this fish here that I'm doing is seems to be all about fins. Now, I mean, this one, the, the rice eel has no fins whatsoever, really, because it has this one long one, dorsal fin. This one is all, um, it's like a wall, picket fence of fins everywhere. Blue and white fish, and because of the coronavirus and... Uh, the fact that we're doomed. It's just the flu. It's just the flu. Um, I can't go to Minnesota this year, and in Minnesota, at our family lake home that I've spent my every year since I was in second grade at, 
I'm unable to do that this year. So what I'm, I'm sort of doing is pretending I'm there and one of the things I often do when I'm there is to draw fish just because my brothers and my nephew and my niece maybe to a degree, certain extent, they like to fish. I don't have the fish gene, never, it was always boring to me. But they go fishing and they come back with their empty tackle box or whatever the word is. Basket, fish basket, what are those things called? You put the fish in. Anyway, it's empty because Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes, is also the land of 10,000 lakes and 1,000 fish. And I think Gull Lake has no fish in it any longer. But what we have up at the lake <clears throat> is a wall um, that's covered with blue and white, flow blue uh, plates, china. And some of it's antique, some of it's not antique. Um, some of it's um, sort of those souvenir things you get from Niagara Falls. and Anyway, it's all on this wall behind the, above the dining room table in kitchen area. And I thought I would make these little cardboard fish and hang them along with the plates. This is not a cardboard fish, but this is a fish. So I'm doing another display of these drawings, these little doodles. And this paper, these paint samples, because of their surface, the ink doesn't really want to be absorbed in it. So, one of the things I'm trying to do here, I know that I'm, my conversation is going all over the map, is I'm trying to learn to like this pen nib. It's one that I would probably never, ever, ever choose to buy, but I bought it on eBay. and. I've, I'm trying to love it. No, I'm not trying to love it. That's asking for too much. I'm just trying to like it. And as you can see, I'm, I'm making some nice things with it. So if at the end of the day I make a bunch of nice things, and especially if I am able to sell some of these drawings I'm making, you can buy them you want. Add to shopping cart one million dollars. No, they're not a million, but they're maybe, maybe they'll be 20 bucks a piece, something like that. I used to drink and I would spend more money on booze at night than I'm asking for these well, a lot more money than that, come to think of it. And it seems to me something like this would look lovely in your kitchen. Right? So this pen, going back to Jack Webb here, this is the Sergeant Joe Friday Jack Webb pen is Johnny OneNote, but unlike other Johnny OneNote pens, such as Schaefer Triumph nib or a Parker 51, this looks like it has a regular nib, and I kind of want it to do what regular nibs do, and it's not because it doesn't do that, I'm annoyed with it, but I'm trying to learn to 
like it. Like, okay, what kind of things can I do with this pen? And I can do this. It makes Johnny one notey kind of lines. It makes me want to draw in straight lines rather than in uh, curved ones. And I think I'd much rather draw in curved lines than straight lines. But if this pen was really, really fine, I would like it a lot. But because it's kind of big, broad, I'm less fond of it. Where did the other one go there? Oh, I screwed that up. Whatever. Um, it's just... You know those, those computer-generated voices you hear on YouTube? Well, I hear on YouTube channels. That's what this pen sounds like. It's, uh, there's no inflection. It's a monotone and um, it's really annoying, those voices. And I wish that the computer that's program or whatever, whoever makes these things work would you know, go through the script that it's going to be writing and the words that it will mispronounce, they would fix it. Because they don't fix it and it reads, reads them without knowing how to pronounce them, which is annoying. Anyway, this pen is like those. It's, it's presents a the words are there, but there's a little bit of, there's just no um, inflection where it belongs. That's what this nib does. And it's like Jack Webb. Jack Webb didn't have just the facts, ma'am. He didn't drone, he didn't, but he, he also didn't emote. That's the word. This pen does this pen does not emote. It just to you know makes straight lines. It wants to make straight lines. That's all it wants to do. And dots. Can make a dot okay. Can make a straight line, a short straight line, okay. Staccato. Eight dots. Dots and dashes. This is Morse code pen. It's the, the pen that was for, designed for Marconi men. Can make a dot and a dash. Well, did I, is this done yet? this fish done. One of the things I was doing downstairs with my little cardboard fish was try, trying to... They all look like enough like fish, but when I actually looked at a book on fish, which is what I'm doing right now, I see, oh my god, I put these things in the wrong spot. But there's no such thing as putting these things in the wrong spot. Yes, they have a mouth and an eye and a tail. That's about all they have in common. They, they might have a dorsal fin, or a remnant of a dorsal fin, but they're just way diverse.
which means any, anything I make that has an eye and a mouth and a tail probably would be some kind of fish somewhere. I just looked at that page. Okay, what kind of fish shall I do here? Dolphin fish. Okay, so this fish looks like that. Come on, Jack. You can make a curved line if you want to. Small low tail there. Fin, fin, fin. Okay, this is an ugly fish. But some fish are ugly. They're not all pretty. It's like people. You know, they can't all be as beautiful as I am. They have to be, there has to be some fugliness out there. So, uh, of course I'm joking. This fish has spots. Okay, let's see what happens. I have to fix it with this, because this is pretty bad. But how can I fix it with this? Oh, damn it. See, this is, some of this paper, the, the ink sort of spreads out and sits very nicely. And some paper, it doesn't spread out at all. It just beads up on top. And this, whatever, this paint or ink or whatever, is made of is not happy with my drawing. My drawing is not happy with the paper. So now I have to sort of, I had, I had plans for this drawing, which I have, which are now thwarted by the, by the beating upness of it. So I'm gonna switch gears here and try to make do. Yes, I could complain. I know how to do that. Okay. To make this better. See? It all disappears. All of that hard work goes away. Not all of it, but it's there. So now we'll go back with the pen. You know, if I let this dry, it might end up looking okay. but you people know how impatient I can be. You know, there's parts of this I like. There's parts of it that I don't like. And can I tell you what is the part I like and what is the part I don't like? I, I don't think I can because it's not <laughs> it's not easy for me to decide. I'm, I'm wishy-washy with respect to that. Okay, there is a, you know, there has to be a way for me to fix this. Let's say I don't like it. Let's say I absolutely hate it. There has to be a way where I can correct this. I sometimes think of art as being like a, a mathematical equation. And just add, you know, you have x, y, z times 3x over blah, blah, divided by blah, blah, blah equals 3. And let's say that's not correct. There has, but there is a way to fix that by just changing one thing. You, it's equal to 4 not three, and 
sometimes, you know, it's a much more complicated alteration you have to make. You might have to change a, the equal sign. You, you could also just say, make the equal sign be an unequal sign, and it'll be perfect. Or it'll be true, it won't be perfect, but... So I always think that there's a way to take a drawing like this that is just not, this is good, this is good, that other one is good, this one is not good. Is it the shape? Is it the drawing? Is it the dots? Is it the what? And I don't know what it is, but I do think there has to be a way of making it good. In my realm of understanding of mathematics and understanding of art, there has to be a way of turning this into being good. Maybe that's maybe what I just did is all it needs. I had to turn that into a beak. I think I have to make these little whiskers it has look like it wasn't a mistake, which is what it was originally. That's what I wanted to do. Remember that when you threw a softball into the... You were trying to, you know, put it over the plate. No, it's a better pool billiards. You know, when you shoot a ball and it bounces all different ways and it accidentally makes a ball go in. That's what I wanted to do. Clearly, your brain was not even remotely clever enough to come up with that in advance. Come on, Jack. Don't fail me. Well, it's working better today than it did yesterday, and it's working better yesterday than it did the day before. So, the, a moral of this story is there's no such thing as a bad pen. Now, that's not, there's all sorts of bad pens out there, but if you don't like a pen, it's not necessarily because the pen is bad. It's just that you haven't figured out how to use it yet. There has to be a way that this drawing can be made good. There has to be a way where this pen can be appreciated for the line that it makes. There has to be. If there isn't a way to do that, my faith in, not humanity, but in physics and the laws of nature will go away. Perch-like fishes. This is still a perch-like fish. It doesn't look anything like a perch. This one. Oops, you can't even see it. When I'm doing these fishes, I am often I'm reminded of this movie I saw with Don Knotts called The Incredible Mr. Limpet, where Don Knotts is a character who is a fish lover, runs an aquarium store. I think, ends up turning into a fish. Yes, 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 I know. Dumb idea, but when you're uh, six years old, it was a fun movie. 
And a lot of these, I keep seeing Mr. Limpet. Mr. Limpet head. It's Don Knotts. He had a bow tie, a little hat, and Ponce glasses. I think. Almost positive he had Ponce glasses. And he turns into a fish and saves the world from Nazism. This fish looks like it's made of brick. This is the brick fish. You know, I should, before I do this, I should try out, is this paper the kind of paper that, the kind of covering that makes my ink bead up, or is this the kind that doesn't? I think this is the kind that doesn't. Eye, sort of a square eye. I imagine you think all of these little fish are beginning to look alike, and they kind of do. Sometimes these things are just doodles. They don't, well, most of my art these days are seem, in my mind, seem to be kind of just doodles. You know, COVID-19 and racial unrest and stupidest person on the planet in the White House. All of these things make me wonder why I bother getting up in the morning. You know, the world, when I was a kid, science class was so exciting. You know, we got to learn all sorts of interesting things. We were going to the moon. We were going to the bottom of the ocean. We were discovering all sorts of exciting things. And nowadays, people are believing that the world is flat. Now, there might have been six people when I was growing up that believed that. But now there are many thousands of people that believe that. And it's very sad. <sighs> it's just very sad that the interweb exists. Now, yes, I know you're watching me on the interweb, but you could be watching the Flat Earth Guy. So I wonder whether, you know, in someone else's children when they're in school are going to have to sit and learn two versions of what the earth looks like. Class, now that we finished the chapter on the round earth, we're going to do the chapter on the flat earth. See, look what happened right there. Right there, I don't know. It's like I pull this thing down and it makes this little island of light around the dark. Now that wasn't happening when I was doing it with the other stuff. So I'm I'm having fun with this one because that's something new is happening. The the ink comes down and it dissolves the ink that's underneath and then makes it lighter and then the new when I pick up the pen there's a blob of ink that forms 
or is left on this lighter island. So there's these little dark dots surrounded by light, which could have been happening on my other ones, but I didn't notice it before. So is that going to happen? Are we going to be, you know, there are stupid people out there that think that we need to teach creationism along with evolution. Except it's not just creationism, it's just, it's creationism of one particular thing. We don't hear about the giant turtle and the Native American bear and skunk or whatever it is, you know, we only hear about this Garden of Eden nonsense. So if we're gonna, if, if, if we somehow have to, because of some dumb law, teach creationism, then we have, I think, I would demand that we have to list, we have to go through all of the creation myths, fairy tales. And then we, you know, I think also the, you know, the, you know, if you went to the dentist, if you had a problem with your teeth and your dentist talked about, you know, he said, what you do is you, you take, you know, you've got a rather serious issue here. And, you know, when you were a kid, the tooth fairy would give you money when you would lose a tooth. Well, it's the same thing, but it's kind of in reverse. So what you do, you go home and you, you put a check under your pillow made out to cash. Made out to the, you can make it out to the tooth fairy. And when you wake up in the morning, your tooth, your teeth will be fixed and your check will be gone and the money will be, will, will be withdrawn from your bank. And what, what would you say to that dentist? I'm waiting. Write your answers below. You'd say, you loser. I'm going to call the dental association, whatever they are. The AD XYZ. But the AD XYZ is going to be run by Betty, Betsy DeVos and her minions. So it's not going to do you any good. But in your heart of hearts, you're going to think, how on earth did this happen? How could we have gone to gotten to this place. And it's because it's a slippery slope that starts with creationism and intelligent design. And if you believe in creationism or intelligent design, you also probably believe in the tooth fairy. Or you should, because it's much easier to believe the tooth fairy than your actual dentist. Okay, what's happening here? This is one of these sort of catfishy kind of fish. It looks like a catfishy sort of fish, but all of these feelers, I imagine it lives in the mud and it has to it uses its feelers to figure out where the lunch is, the lunch counter is. So what I just did is I squeezed this plastic barrel and I put out a gallon of water when I was drawing up here. It was relatively dry, this brush, so I was having a little bit more control. And again, we're 
at that point where I hate this drawing, so how do I make it better? Well, this turns into sort of nothing over here. So I'm just going to leave that the way I like that little I like that little curl, that little spit curl it has. But up here, I like it, it being very dark. So I'm going to go back in with my Jack Webb pen and I'm going to add more ink, more line work. Now when I when I do use put this ink on the paper, I'm actually sort of scoring the paper, which is causing the ink to go inside of the paper, not just sit on top of the ink, paint or whatever this stuff is. One of my neighbors said this, these things are silk screened, these colors are silk screened on the on the um, paper, so which is entirely possible. There's a big eye, this guy. So I don't know, what do you think about this creationism and about fish and about learning to love your pen regardless of how it writes? No, uh, learning to change your expectations about a particular pen and learning to draw the way it wants. I like this one. This is my little kind of favorite one. This one is I kind of like too. I like them all. Even the one, even the ugly ones, these two ugly ones I learned to like. I wonder now that this is completely dry, can I go back into it? See what happens. Yeah, I can. It's kind of neat. The effects I'm getting going back into it. Huh. Well, I'm learning things. 42 minutes. Bye.